to install Docker, go to docker.com and click on Download Docker Desktop for Windows. Open the executable file to start the installation of Docker. This installation will require restarting your computer. After the installation, click on Close and Restart. This action will restart your computer. After the reboot, you must accept this agreement by clicking the Accept button. If you currently don't have WSL Kennel installed, you have to install it now. Go to the link in the message box. It will open the website with instructions on how to install it. Click on this link to download WSL. When the file is downloaded, execute it and follow these steps. When the installation is complete, you have to close Docker and restart it, so the changes take effect. If you press the X in the Windows, Docker will continue running in the background tasks. In order to close it, you have to do the following. Right-clicking on Docker icon and quick Docker desktop or restart. To install Visual Studio Code, go to this website and download it for Windows. Execute the downloaded file and follow these steps. Let's keep the default settings and press Next and then Install. To use Visual Studio with Docker Container, you have to add the extension Dev Containers. Click on the Install button and wait until the installation is complete. Now that Visual Studio Code is installed, let's go back to our Docker container to create our environment for Python. Click on Get Started and then check Local Directory. Please give it a name and click Select to specify the path for your local directory. Select the folder and press Continue. Depending on where the folder you want to use is located, it will require you to open Docker as administrator. If you get an error when trying to create a dev environment using a local directory, it is good that you try to run Docker as administrator. You can try to create your dev environment again. When the dev environment is complete, you can press Done or go directly and click Open in VS Code to open Visual Studio Code. Now that our environment is attached to our local dev folder, we can create files in VS Code and the files will be available in both places, in the Docker environment and your local folder. VS Code will prompt some recommendations about installing extensions like Python. I also recommend installing each recommended extension. Let's run app get update to get the system up to date. Your development environment is isolated from your operating system. If we run the command, we will see the details of the operating system where our Python environment is running. It is a good practice to use a virtual environment for our development. Let's check the Python version we have installed by running Python 3 version. One library that we used for installing other libraries is pip. To use it, we need to install it by running the following command. To check the version, run pip3 version. Now, let's run a simple print code to ensure we can run Python code.
you can use Docker Dev Environment with GitHub Repository. To create it, click on Create button, then get started and give it a name. You need a GitHub account in order to use them with Docker Dev Environment. You can sign in or create an account if you do not already have an account. Create a repository if you still don't have one, and copy the repo link. Paste the link and press continue. If you get an error like this, that means you still don't have Git on your computer. So let's install it if you still need to do so. Click on the install to open this website. Find the Windows version of the setup and click on the link. Execute the downloaded file and install Git. Click on Next and keep the default settings. If you click Retry, it probably will not work, so close and restart Docker container. The correct way to exit and restart Docker is by clicking in the task settings, right-clicking on Docker icon and quick Docker desktop or restart. After the Git is installed, you can try to create your dev environment again. Please give it a name, paste the link and press continue. Same previous procedure to open Visual Studio Code. Now, let's create a new file and try to synchronize it with GitHub. If you click on the Git icon, you will be able to commit your files into GitHub using Visual Studio. There are multiple ways to push files in GitHub, but for now, we will be doing it using Visual Studio. Click on the plus icon to stage your file. Give the commit a short description and click the commit button. If this is the first time you are doing this, you will get an alert indicating that you need to configure your username and email. To avoid getting this error, execute the following commands using your username and email that you used when you created your GitHub account. This message is indicating that there are no staged changes, so I will delete the compose dev file that was generated during the dev environment creation. Also, if you don't to see your file in GitHub repository, it is possible that you need to execute this command to fix the issue. A public branch button will appear and you have to click on it. Now, you need to authenticate that the GitHub account belongs to you. A sign-in pop-up box will appear. There are several ways to authenticate, like browser, token, and code. This tutorial will use the browser since it is a straightforward method. After you log into your account, you will get a screen like this and click on Authorize Git and Credential Manager. Now refresh your repository in GitHub and the file you created in Visual Studio Code should be there. Sometimes, you don't want to use Docker as your virtual environment for your Python development. There is one method to keep insulate your environment from your operating system. Python Virtual Environment allows you with this goal. Before you can set up a virtual environment, you need to install Python on your local computer. To install Python, go to the Python website and click on Download, then click on Load Python. This will download the latest version of Python. Open the file, and before starting the installation, it is crucial to check on the box Add Python to Path. If you don't check this box, you have to do extra steps to use Python. I will show you later in case you forget to check it. 
click on Install Now or customize the installation and follow the instructions. I will keep the default values. To register the Python path, in case you did not check the Add Python to Path when you installed Python, you have to register the path here similar to this, but using your own path's names. Here it is, where you have to insert it in a new line. And that's it. Now, let's create a folder to be used to install our virtual environment. Open the terminal and check that Python is running by typing this Python version. Looks good. Let's check the pip version. It looks good too. With the pip freeze command, you can see all installed packages and libraries. You can see that there are no results because we still haven't installed any packages. Also, this is your local computer's operating system that you don't want any of your packages to be installed, so as to avoid conflicts and collisions between different development projects. Of course, you can install any library here, but that is different from the best practices. To set up your virtual environment, run the command python mvenv and venv, which is the name of your virtual environment. Please notice that this created a new folder with a given name. To activate your virtual environment, run the following command. Please take into account that this is relative to your current path and depends on where you created your virtual environment. If you get an error like this indicating that it cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on the system, you have to copy the link in the error and open it in a browser, where you will get the instructions on how to enable scripts running in PowerShell. Scroll down and copy this command, and run it in your terminal. Also, you can run it directly in your PowerShell command prompt optional. After that, run the activate command again, and you will see a green letter with the name of your environment at the start of the terminal line. Now you can install any package or library in this particular environment. You can create as many environments as you need and have different package installations and versions. Let's install one library to demonstrate how the environment works. We will use pip to install the requests library. After the installation, we can run pip freeze again and see all the libraries and their version. To deactivate your environment, just run the activate command. Notice how the green name has gone. This means you are outside of your virtual environment. If we rerun freeze, it will show that no libraries are installed. Thanks for watching.